technology for combiner-based uh, strength reduction. Thank you for coming to the talk. And uh, so, do I want to know the drop distance from like Madrid to Barcelona? Uh, we could try, we could use triangle inequality to give a rough estimation. Uh, if we happen to know their distance to a common place, for example, in here the Girona, and triangle inequality tells that one edge of the triangle must be no longer the, um, than the sum of the two other edges and no shorter than their differences. And while stress, redu stress reduction is a com compiler optimization technique, which could uh, which tries to replace expensive operations with uh, cheaper but equivalent operations. For example, we could replace like divisions uh, with the big, uh, which may cost like 20 cycles with this kind of big operations, which only cost one or several cycles. However, traditional stress reduction only works on like or only works at the instruction level. So this work, our goal is to generalize stress reduction with triangular, triangle inequality. So here I want to use an example to give you some like conceptual, uh, uh, some insight about the conceptual connections between stress reduction and triangular inequality. So uh, for example, k-means is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm. It is used to group n points in d dimensions into k clusters. The standard k-means algorithm starts with some initial centers and then it will iteratively go through two steps until convergence. And the first step is about to assign points to uh, assign each point to its closest center based on their distance to uh, each of these centers. And then uh, the second step will update the centers with, uh, uh, with the new centroids of all points assigned to it. So uh, especially the performance bottleneck is, uh, is step one, which requires like n times k distance computations per iteration. Uh, that is uh, to compute the distance from every point to every centers. And especially when the dimension, uh, dim dim dimensionality of the point is high, then the distance computation can be very expensive. So one way to do the optimizations uh, is to uh, use bounds as replacements of distance for comparisons. As our goal in the assignment step, as our goal is just to find the assignment, the correct assi assignment instead of the exact distance. So here I want to use an example to show uh, when these bounds can be used as a re re replacement and why they are cheaper. So uh, you can, uh, for example, for Q is a point for which we want to design its assignment. And uh, blue and black circles are the centers in previous and in current iterations. So uh, suppose we already know the distance from we already as we already calculate for, for example, if we already calculate the distance from Q to the centers in previous iteration, and we also calculate the center shift across iteration. Then based on this left triangle, we could compute the upper bound of the distance. Similarly, we could apply triangle inequality to the uh, to the bottom triangle and can do the lower bound between Q and C1 prime, which is just a 9. Yes, you can see as 6 is already smaller than 9. Uh, we can use this bound direct, uh, directly as comparison. And we can, you know, as 6 is already smaller than 9, and we can conclude that C2 prime cannot be the closest center of Q. And we can simply remove the expensive distance computation from Q to C1, C2 prime. And and you can see uh, um, um, the uh, the cost for computing this bound is about is just about the center shift as I already know the distance in the previous iteration. So the cost would be just the k distance for bounds computation. While if we want to carry out the standard k-means uh, algorithm in in one iteration, there will be like n times k distance computation, right? And this saving is because of this uh, the showing of the uh, distance for uh, the distance calculation uh, about this center shift across all different points for which we want to design its assignment. Okay. So I think um, from the previous example, we can see that uh, the, uh, the key observation of the uh, relation between TI optimization and uh, stress reduction is that TI optimization is just about replacing expensive distance computations with cheaper bounds for comparisons. 
Uh, however, there are some uh, special challenges for applying T uh, TI for strength reduction. As you are, you may already notice that uh, TI, uh, the cost, uh, the bounds, the cost for bounds computation is only cheaper on a large scope. So it's not one to one. Uh, uh, one to one mapping relation. And besides, there are only some cases uh, we could replace bounds computations with distance computations. Uh, for example, only one like six is smaller than nine. If we if it doesn't hold, then we still have to com compute the exact distance computation. So when we apply cloud optimization, we must care about the efficiency. So we need to minimize the cost of TI usage while avoiding the maximum calculation. And besides, um, it seems that TI, uh, also t uh, TI can be very useful for a lot of distance related problems, especially in data analytics. It still like um, works for distance computation. So we wonder, uh, can, can it cover uh, anything beyond the distance computation? So let's look at what previous, like, uh, what previous work uh, about these TI optimizations. You can find there are a lot of top uh, papers published in top conference in machine learning and data, data mining. So uh, first, they are all about distance computations, using DTI to optimize, optimize distance computations. And second, all these optimizations are very pro problem specific. So they require a lot of manual, ex uh, manual efforts from the domain experts. So, mm, and you can see from, from if for if for one specific distance related problems like k-means, they have a bunch of well, bunch of papers. They differ in that how they apply, how they control the overhead of the TR optimizations while still like uh, could avoid a lot of distance computations. So our contribution uh, in this work. Uh, the first part is like we build the conceptual collections between TI and stress reduction. Further, like uh, we also like generalize the TI theory. So we brought a uh, propose a new like triangular inequality, which is based on angular instead of uh, age of the tri a traditional triangular inequality, and we studied its relations with the traditional TI uh, based uh, based on age. We also call it ETI and uh, ATI. Our new one is ATI and the traditional one is ETI. So uh, based on this theory, we uh, we generalized uh, the uh, stress reduction, and it works not only for distance computations, and it also works for dot product computations. And uh, programmers could benefit from our work, work our framework from the, our API and the compiler spot. So uh, and from our result, it shows that we could speed up a lot of machine learning and data mining algorithm by magnitudes of speed up. So first is what is uh, angular triangle inequality? So angular triangle inequality says that we could estimate the angles between two vectors, for example, Q and T, based on their angles to a third vector like uh, vector L. So in this example, we could conclude that the angles between Q and T must be in the uh, in the range the low uh, in the range of 110 degrees and 130 degrees. And similarly, we could uh, get the um, bounds of the dot product of these two vectors uh, in uh, in this range. So it is uh, need to mention that we find that ATI could hold in space of any dimensions, and the detailed proofs can be found in our paper. So here I want to use the example to show that how um, bounds computed based on ATI could be used as a cheap replacement of the dot product computations in real applications. So for example, the restricted Boltzmann machine is one of the uh, one uh, inflation type of artificial neural network used in deep learning. So it consists of two layers, one visible layer and one hidden layer. And uh, we have this weight, uh, weight matrix connecting each pair of the hidden nodes and, uh, uh, and the visible nodes. So for, uh, for restricted Boltzmann machines, the training algorithm is based on Gibbs uh, sampling, which involves a two-way propagation from the, uh, between the visible layer and the hidden layer. So for example, you will want to compute the value, uh, uh, the value of one hidden node, HM, here. So we could uh, 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 oh, need to mention that the hidden uh, the, the value of a hidden node can only be zero or one. So uh, uh, it must be binary. Uh, 
so we first compute the conditional property of uh, of uh, the uh, property of uh, uh, H1 uh, that this hidden node to be one. And this process is very similar as a logistic regression process. So we just uh, compute the dot product between um, between the visible vector and the corresponding like weight vector. And because the prob probability can only be in the range of zero and one, so we could use the sigmoid function to confine the, dot uh, the value of the dot product to be uh, in the range of uh, zero to one. And after we get the conditional property, we can directly set the value of uh, the, uh, the exact value of a hidden node. So this is based on our uh, standard statistical, uh, statistical uh, process. So we draw a random variable in the range of 0 and 1, and then compare this variable with the probability we just uh, computed. And if this uh, variable is smaller than the, that prob probability, then we just uh, set the, uh, the hidden node to be 1. Otherwise, we set it to be 0. So you may notice that the overhead, uh, the bottleneck of this process, in fact, uh, actually is a dot product computation, especially considering that uh, with, uh, there could be like hundreds to thousands of nodes in the visible layer, right? So uh, here I want to uh, give, you, uh, give you some insights about one and how bounds can be used as a replacement of the exact dot product computation. So from, uh, from this, this, uh, this equation about how we set the, the value of the hidden node, so we can see that you may could uh, compute the lower bound of this probability. And we find that this, uh, if this lower bound is already larger than R, so we can conclude that R must be smaller than this possibility. And uh, we can directly conclude that HM could, should be one, right? And in other cases, it's like, uh, you we can know that the upper bound of this possibility is smaller, is smaller than R. R then we know that it, uh, the hidden node must be zero. So you can see in both cases, bounds can be used as a replacement of the exact uh, dot product computation, and it could help to fill, uh, filter out the more expensive computations. So uh, another question is. Uh, how we can compute these bounds and why they are cheaper. So uh, you can see the, uh, the prob probability just are a dot product and then we apply the sigmoid function. As the sigmoid function is a monotonic function, then the bounds computation on the probability is just about how we compute the bounds of this dot product. As we already learned that ATI could use the B uh, to compute these bounds of dot product. And here I want to use uh, this figure as an example to show that if we, uh, if we, uh, we, we can just, uh, just choose one uh, vector like L uh, and then to compute the, dot uh, to dot the, the bound of the dot product between, uh, between V vector and the W vector, we just need to know uh, both of the angles to this uh, L vector, right? And uh, you can see that for if we only focus on one of these computations, the cost is not smaller, uh, it's not cheaper. But if we uh, have a larger view, because uh, this computation is more like a mini batch, uh, mini batch uh, learning process, and n instance of v in a batch, we are learning with the same uh, same uh, matrix matrix uh, weight matrix. And in this way, we can see that for all this own instance of W, we can, uh, and uh, we only need to compute like uh, each of the angles to this L, which, which will be N, and uh, all these uh, M columns, columns of this matrix to L, which should be M. So the total cost for bound computation would be just N times M, while the original cost would be N times M. So uh, bounds are cheaper in large scope, and this is key, key to the stress reduction optimizations. So we also studied the relations of like eight, um, the angular based uh, angular triangle inequality and age based triangle inequality, and our results shows that in fact angle are better information to record than distance for tighter bound computations. I mean for both distance computation and dot product computation. So here I want to use the example to give you some insights. So. Uh, for example, if we want to know the distance between uh, point Q and T, we could rely on their distance 
uh, to a third uh, point L. And based on E triangling uh, E Ti, we could compute that the, uh, the bounds of the distance between Q and T should be in the range of 2 to 0 to 2. The lower bound is 0 and the upper bound is 2, right? And uh, if, uh, if we want to apply ATI to the same problem, we could cr create like uh, three vectors like Q, T, and L corresponding to each of these points. And if we, uh, uh, based on the uh, to apply ATI, we could uh, we need to know the angles between between Q to L and T to L, and in this example, it's just a zero. So from ATI, we could conclude that the angles from Q to T is also zero. So the uh, the upper and lower bounds of the dot product will just be uh, all be three. So this is uh, how we use ATI to compute the dot product. And there is a formula, a standard formula about how to connect the dot product and the distance computations. And based on these equations, we can directly conclude that the distance from Q and T must be true. So in this case, we show that if we use ATI for distance computations, we could get even tighter bounds compared to the traditional ATI. So uh, in our paper, we have more detailed proofs about like how ATI always gave tighter bounds, no matter it's a distance computation or dot product computations. So we have already introduced a theory about how how we could apply ETI and ATI, but there are also a lot a lot of other complicated of applying ATI and ATI. For example, so how to choose uh, these two? Uh, although we show that ATI have already um, always give tighter bounds than ETI, but the tightness of the bounds is is not the only factor re relevant to the benefit of TI optimization. Besides, there are many other variants of applying ATI and ATI. So we have to consider the trade-offs between the cost and quality of bounds, and there could be multi-level of these kind of filters, which each, each have a different cost and a different quality of bounds. And also, the, all these optimizations could be uh, uh, sensitive to the input uh, uh, to the input of a particular problems. So we also need to have some uh, dynamic adaption. So the solution is we uh, we created this guided TI adaption to choose the best TI optimization on the fly, and uh, as it includes a lot of technical details. So if you are interested, you can refer to our paper. So it seems that we already yeah uh, we already have the knowledge of the uh, theory background of the TI and AT, uh, ATI and ATI, and also we have a framework to choose the best optimizations. Uh, uh, and uh, the next question is how could programmers benefit from our framework? And uh, the first way to use our framework is uh, the programmer could use our APIs to write the programs. And for example, the first four is about how the programmer could use our APIs to write the dot product uh, distance. And then the last part is about uh, uh, what, how the comparison uh, how the comparison is conducted and how the comparison is used. So for example, the k-means could be just the four uh, k-means problem just for, uh, falls into this category. It is about to find the closest the targets for each query points. So besides these APIs, we also build some small gadget to find the, uh, the optimizations in the in existing code through like code pattern matching. And our gadget is based on the uh, based on the observation that all the optimization uh, the optimization opportunity comes from like first is it, there must be some distance and dot product compu uh, computations, and the result is used for compa comparisons. And here this is an example about this kind of code pattern. So if, uh, for example, P is just a calculate distance of dot product, and it might be uh, the, the, the result of P could be uh, uh, applied to some monotonic relation, just like the uh, sigmoid functions in restricted Boltzmann machine. And, and then the, there could be some uh, uh, branches uh, consuming this uh, computation uh, comparison result. And you, uh, only in oh, sorry. and uh, in these branches, there must be one branch of it. Uh, there is no uh, need for the real computation. So that that indicates uh, uh, of using uh, bounds as a re re replacement of the exact distance of dot product computations. 
So we evaluate our uh, framework on eight benchmarks, uh, benchmarks five with distance computations and three with start product computations. And here in the table shows uh, uh, these problems and their related domains. You can see that the first five are distance related problems and last, last three are, the, are with uh, dot products. So some of these problems are even rented as the top three data mining algorithms. So we choose these uh, eight benchmarks because uh, uh, the distance of dot product computations are the performance bottleneck. So it is easy to show our benefits. Here gives the overall speed up uh, bought by our, our framework. And uh, for each of these uh, uh, problems, we tested on three data sets. And uh, from the first, uh, first five are the distance related problems. And the speed up comes from the, uh, the distance we can success, uh, successfully uh, uh, replace the with the dot product, uh, the bounce computation. And you can see that it's up to, uh, it's always larger than 93% and up to 99%. And uh, the last three are about the dot product computations. And you can see uh, the first, uh, for the first two problems, we still can remove a lot of uh, distance computations. But the speed up does not directly translate. Uh, this received the uh, dot product computation does not uh, directly uh, translate to our final speed up. That's because the ATI, uh, the ATI bounce computation is more expensive than the ETI bounce computation. And, uh, the last one is uh, is quite uh, we is only 84 percent. That is because we apply the sigmoid function, so that uh, uh, makes some constraints about our advanced computation. And well, as we mentioned, ATI could provide tighter bounds than ETI. So here we want to use the example the KN join to show how uh, how tighter bounds could lead to better optimizations. And KN join is uh, just a join operation on the K nearest neighbor search. And here it shows that uh, shows about the fraction of extra savings of distant computations due to the tighter bounds by ATI if we just uh, use ATI. And you can see that for all of the, these data sets we can remove more than 93% of the distance by using ATI. And um, it also shows that one the, uh, uh, for, for, smaller, for smaller K, we have like a larger uh, percentage. The reason is once the K is smaller, then more points um, uh, along uh, the, pos uh, the possibility of a points to not be the top K uh, closest uh, target points uh, would be higher. So they give us, give us more opportunities to remove uh, distance computations. So the final takeaways of my work is we generalize, first we generalize the stress reduction with TI, and also we did straightforward explorations of, uh, of applying TI. The first is we brought a process ATI, and we have this idea TI adaption to uh, uh, automatically find the best TI optimizations, and we, uh, we gave the opportunity for the programmer to automatically use our, uh, to use our framework uh, and benefit, of, benefit from automatic, uh, our automatic optimizations. And the final result is very rewarding, so we have magnitudes of speed up of the standard version and um, several times of the pre-work manual um, optimization from the domain experts based on ETI. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, yes. um, I have a question regarding the overheads of this technique. Uh -huh. um, so you are computing the bounds, mm -hmm. and in some cases, it might happen that the bound doesn't help you and you just have to compute the distance, right? Uh, if it doesn't help, we carry out the exact computation and do the comparison. Yes. Yes. So, did you, uh, on what inputs did you evaluate the benchmarks? Uh, could you find any inputs that were not giving you this kind of benefit and instead you just introduce overhead because of this uh, triangular uh, comparison? 
Okay, that is a very good question. So I think I have two answers. The first one is um, uh, we have like theoretical proof that even uh, it cannot remove any distance computation. The overhead is still like trivial to the standard com computations. So that is uh, one benefit of this TR optimizations. And in real data, we test. In fact, we tested a lot of data sets, and it always gave very good speed up. It always can fill out a lot of distance computations have good speed up. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Yes. Uh, if you're using the C++ interface that you presented, uh, I'm, the interface is somehow caching the uh, distance computations that are being uh, performed. Is there like some uh, cache invalidation troubles here? Do you have to invalidate the whole cache, or can you just like invalidate some of the uh, uh, distance computations from one step to another? So you mean uh, caches? Some of distance have already been calculated. How can you reuse it? Um, and then, uh, like uh, between iterations, you're moving points, and then you have to like invalidate these distance computations or uh... caching? No. Okay, I'll have to ask more. <laughs> yeah, because um, uh, after uh, after iteration after iteration, like it means the center will get updated, or even those updated could be very small. They are totally different points. So the, if you uh, carry out the standard, it means you you need to recompute all these distance computations. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, that is a very good question. So for um, ATI and ATI guarantees that uh, the bounds you compute, uh, the exact value, uh, the exact distance must be within the range of the value we computed, the, the bounds, like within the upper bound and lower bound. So in theory, our, our method should or should not change our, the final results. But there could be some problem, like if there, if there is a tie, it could change the comparison. Uh, order and may lead to a different result. But in our practice, we check all the results. It looks exactly the same. So yeah, it seems it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah.